Look at this man. He is distraught. He's worried about potential male pattern baldness. He knows that roughly two-thirds of all men will experience some form of it before the age of 35. It might be his time. Or will it? There's a way to fight this unwanted follicle recession, and it's with the sponsor of this video, Keeps. With Keeps, this man no longer has to deal with either the discomfort of going to a doctor's office or going to a store to get his medication. A licensed doctor reviews his information online. It's delivered right to his home, and it's proven products that really work. Keeps offers generic versions of FDA-approved medications, so it's far cheaper but just as efficient. They are roughly 90% effective at reducing or stopping hair loss. Some men have even seen hair grow back over time. Keeps treatments start at only $10 a month, and innumerable men have lavished praise for saving their scalps. Perhaps he can be one of the many who have devoted their hair to Keeps. This man is now hopeful. He has a fighting chance against his hair turning into a desert of baldness. And you can help yourself too by saving 50% off your first order. Just go to keeps.com slash utree to find out more. Don't let baldness consume your life. Prevention is key. Keep your hair with keeps. How's that for a pun? Major League Baseball, where the significant problems are ignored until they become a massive eyesore. And any attempt to fix it will be overwrought and create more embarrassment than it once had. The league has been mishandling a lot of shit over the past few years, but this newest controversy might take the cake. In May, a huge concern was about batting averages being down and strikeouts way up. Turns out there was a possible reason for that. Widespread usage of sticky substances to improve grip on the ball and drastically spike spin rates. Those insane pitches that look too good to be true, they probably were helped with spider tag. After ignoring the issue for too long, MLB realized no one wants to see nothing but strikeouts, walks, and home runs. So they chose to correct this issue in the most ham-fisted way possible. Mandatory checks of pitchers after every inning. And sometimes during innings. We've gone from hope to watching pitchers pull their fucking pants down to check for sticky goop. But it's okay, they caught someone! See? It's working! It was probably sweat mixed with rosin, but it's worth the terrible PR! Same goes for these teams. I hope. Nobody said rebuilds were easy. One of the more stunning stories of the season. The Baltimore Orioles suck. I know, it's incredible. As happy as I can be for Trey Mancini fucking cancer shit up or John Means' is no hitter, a lot of other parts have stalled. The big accomplishment was that long-ass losing streak on the road they had. And even then, they got one-upped. At this point, it's just counting down the days until Rutschman comes up. Well, this is a rather pleasant surprise. Pleasant to Boston, not the rest of us. After a few years of wallowing in the doldrums, the Red Sox launched what could possibly be described as a reenactment of the Tea Party. They disguised themselves as trash, then stormed the boats of Yankees and throw all their valuable shit overboard. With the likes of Devers, Bogarts, and the renewed J.D. Martinez, they now hold court as one of the best teams in baseball. The pitching has returned to form, particularly the bullpen. The once uninspired team has found life again. Perhaps all this team really needed was Alex Cora. I think they go after some starting pitching at the deadline, though. Because the goals have changed. Now they load for another World Series run. You ready? Do you remember when I preached patience with this team back in April? It was far too early to start panicking about the sluggish nature of the pinstripes. Okay, now is the time you start shitting your pants. When you spend months with a combination of massive inconsistency and vastly underperforming players, you should want blood when you have championship ambitions. Perhaps they'll start with Garrett Cole. Not from his performance, but due to his nonchalant manner and the face of accusations of cheating. I don't know, man, those drastically declining spin rates after the fact are pretty suspicious. If only that were the real problem. Everything has gone to shit. The pitchers have developed a fetish for spontaneous combustion. Aaron Boone couldn't properly manage a Johnny Rockets franchise. Gary Sanchez and DJ LeMahieu, among others, have woefully regressed. Savages in the box, yeah, by swinging and fucking everything. Even Hal Steinbrenner channeled his dad in response. Not by firing three managers in a row, but by blaming the players for being shit. This is catastrophic for the Bronx. This was supposed to be the time to play in the World Series run. Now they might not even make the dance. Panic time, Yankees. You know the rest of the league loves watching you squirm. The key to surviving the cruel mistress of baseball as a small market team is to always be one step ahead of her to predict future trends and inefficiencies. No team has been better at doing this over the past five years than the Rays. If a beast struggles like a Wooly Adames, they will trade him off to allow guys like Taylor Walls and Wander Franco to try and prove themselves. 
Like previous seasons, the Rays don't have any superstar talents, but lack a true weakness on the roster. Tampa Bay thrives on pitching and defense, and they have done those well so far. They're a plug-and-play unit. An arm is missing? Oh, they'll just find some random branches in the woods to replace it. It's the only way to survive in these harsh times. If all goes according to plan, they'll at least have a shot at a wildcard game. Maybe more if Boston obliges. I'd feel they'd approve of such cavings. I don't know if it's the lack of a true home, being unable to play in Canada due to border restrictions, or the vast gobs of injuries on the team, but the Jays have failed to launch. The thing is, they can still make noise. They have the talent to do so, but nothing is meshing together at the right time to capitalize on it. The main issue here are in the walking wounded, particularly to the bullpen. It's dead from a plethora of wrecked elbows and shoulders. That's not to mention George Springer struggles to stay on the field this year. With the sluggish start, it will be a hard climb back to contention, even with health going their way. The Jays have a very strong lineup, but will everything else piece together? Unless you can get someone other than Jordan Romano to be reliable out of the pen, it's looking like that answer is no. You'll be lucky if you can get back to Toronto this year with how everything is going. As expected, the White Sox are pretty good. They have skill throughout the lineup and a pitching staff worthy of envy. Even with long-term injuries to the likes of Jimenez, Robert, and Madrigal, they still thrive. Southside appears to be gearing up for a division title, or at least a playoff run with the season they're having. But even then, I still have lingering doubts. And it isn't with the team itself. It's with Tony La Russa. There have been more than a few times where he's shown his outdated tendencies and approaches. Be it trying to enforce unwritten rules or not knowing the actual rules of the modern game, I fear he's going to hold this team back from what it can truly be. For fuck's sake, this isn't St. Louis and you don't have Sheriff Molina to enforce the kangaroo court. The only thing that makes me cringe more is Tony's octogenarian crisis. I will have one cocaine, please. Eternal frustrations for the Indians. It's kind of like history if you think about it. It's a proud group that gets undone by disease and manifests destiny. The ones invading on their land, it's the White Sox. They're the new kings in town and will smash those that stand in the way. That includes you, Cleveland. Even then, they have far bigger issues to deal with right now. Honestly, all you have to do is substitute deadly disease for back-breaking injuries and you have a perfect match. You have a strong rotation, don't you? Well, it doesn't matter that a good chunk of it is now on the IL. I see you're having problems hitting the baseball with authority. How about a few more injuries to key contributors? That should amplify your problems further, shouldn't it? Despite their short skit, it seems like another year will they'll come up just short despite everything they have. You can't rely on talent when it's all injured. Great news, the Tigers aren't completely and irreparably awful anymore. They are simply bad. Casey Mize is pretty good even if nothing else is around him. The only other highlights are Akil Badu and Jonathan Scope finding his 2016 vintage in June. If they're lucky, they might win 70 games this year. Now run along, Detroit. Head back to your room. We have some real teams to talk about. You're telling me they're on a good run as of late? Oh, that's funny. Maybe next time you'll be realistic when you're trying to lie to me. Do you remember when the Royals were good? No, I'm not talking 2015. Think back to April. They once held the title of best record in baseball. It was unsustainable as all hell, but it was a good sign for the rebuild. Fast forward two months later. All that hope is gone. Since the beginning of May, they've fallen back to the doldrums of hell. The once best record in baseball fell to a 7-20 June. So what happened? A slap back to reality. Starting pitching regresses to mid-2000s form and the hitting pretty much followed suit. Now they're staring at a crossroad. Do you sell at the deadline or does Dayton Moore still believe this team can do something? They did just invest big money into extensions and bolstering the core. It might have been a mistake if this free fall is considered. I can respect the actions that Minnesota has taken to respond to consistent playoff failure. The art of avoidance. You know you can't lose in the playoffs if you lose all the time in the regular season. It's very progressive thinking. Be it one run games or extra inning losses or outright blowouts, the collapse of the starting pitching or just flat out coming up short, the Twins are a disaster this season. Even when good things happen, they can't catch a break. Byron Buxton was unbelievable to start the year. But then, shocker, the injury prone player got injured. The only waves they make on the field nowadays involve Josh Donaldson shit-talking opposing pitchers. Besides him, Buxton, and old sensei Nelson Cruz, there aren't many more who can on this team. The sudden surge of a playoff window may have already slammed shut, and a dreaded question emerges. Do you blow it up? Because this team isn't getting any younger, and the idea was to bolster a young core that hasn't materialized. There are prospects in the system that have promise. 
Focus on them. This batch may be cooked. The Astros boast something that Houston's other major sports teams can't. They're actually good. Even after losing Springer, it's as if nothing has changed besides their standard dominance. Even the victim complex the fans have about that incident, but at least the team is still very strong. What the Astros can claim is one of the best hitting cores in baseball. There is nary a weakness in sight with all of the talent they can claim. And it makes me annoyed since they didn't need to cheat to win a World Series. Just look at how well they developed this group. Look at how strong their pitching is even without Verlander. They are an easy candidate for a deep playoff run and it's easy to see why. They need to clean the stench off from 2017. You know what does that? Another championship. Then you can dunk on all of us for the constant mockery. And I'll understand it. I'll find it insufferable, but I'll get why you're doing it. If you're a fan of the game of baseball, you should be absolutely livid at the Angels. The fact that they've gone this long wasting all of the generational talent throughout their roster is a sin that few can claim. Shohei Otani has finally achieved his potential as a two-way star. A living highlight reel who dazzles everywhere he plays. Yet there's a good chance he won't be playing in the postseason. You know why? It's because the Angels fucking suck. No depth whatsoever. Nobody emerging at the plate besides Jared Walsh. Their methods of going cheap with the starting rotation, let's pretend to be shocked here, haven't worked. And what you get is an infuriating franchise that has signed awful contract after awful contract. Yes, give me the excuse of Mike Trout's injury, I don't care. This team is an abomination to the sport. I'd argue for contraction since there will be the chance that their stars can be relevant elsewhere. That and it will give Artie Moreno the end he honestly deserves. Failure. He's used to it with all the garbage he's thrown out onto the field. Depending how long they're still here, Oakland is a competitive group that will fight to the last man. Even if some of their hitters are lacking in performance, the overall pitching core will make sure to pick up the slack. But even with the strong start and quality talent, it still feels like something's missing. And maybe I'm looking at Houston and getting nitpicky, but they'll need more to get to the next level. And isn't that what Oakland has been lacking for a while now? They can get to the gate, but will never pass in this current form. Even then, how do you manage to overcome such an obstacle on a budget? Is it in more rentals at the deadline? Is it in trusting the prospects? The A's seem to be stuck and don't know how to break out of it. Perhaps I'm exaggerating since all they need are a few series wins to truly reach their peak, but it hasn't happened in a while. I'm fearing more of the same this year, regardless of what they do. The rebuild is going in the right direction. That at least is a positive. The Mariners are a team that has pivoted towards one that thrives on pitching and defense. It's a nice change of pace from where they shuffle through pitchers like a deck of cards. Chaos Ball is nothing I call outstanding, but it's far better than what they've been throwing out there recently. It's a team of youth, and will need time to gestate. Expectations are low, and it's great that things are starting to come around for the Mariners. Now only if you could do something about that god-awful hitting situation. No hit twice, a team batting average once caressing the Mendoza line, even top prospects flaming out in their debuts. It's not a year where they're going to make it far, Houston and Oakland will see to that. But they'll have to improve in the batter's box if they're going to go anywhere in the future. It's not crucial to fix yet, at least. Haven't we been down this road before? The only reason why anyone cared about this Quad A team was that they had a capacity crowd on opening day. It was a good move, nobody should give a shit about living excrement like the Texas Rangers otherwise. For every Isaiah Kainer-Falefa and Adolis Garcia, there are about 10 players not pulling their weight. Can this team fire John Daniels yet? It's year five of them mindlessly wandering about baseball. Do you see how well Kyle Gibson's pitching? It's perfect for them to fuck up the trade deadline and sell him for pennies a year later. Maybe they won't fuck up Gallo's trade market this time either. When I had this team not making the playoffs before the year, I felt it was because the pitching staff wasn't ready to evolve and suffered losses in the bullpen. In no way did I anticipate it could happen because of this. The Braves of this year are one word. Snake fucking bit. Injuries galore throughout the roster. Travis Darno out long term. The bullpen's been more suspect than not. Marcelo Zuna is accused of domestic violence. Mike Soroka's Achilles is accused of fraud. He tore it again by fucking walking. The goddamn All-Star game got moved from Atlanta to do off-field controversy. This team just can't fucking win this year. I don't care that they're still within striking distance from a playoff spot, it's like nothing's coming together here. If this team goes anywhere, it'll have to be on the back of Ronald Acuna. I just don't know if I trust anyone else to get it done. What you've just heard is any hope the Braves had this season being flushed down a toilet. Just like their playoff aspirations, Acuna's ACL is completely torn. 
I'd get accustomed to the word sell in the next few weeks, Atlanta. It seems like this team is close. Yes, last year was a mirage, but there are a few things I'm just not understanding about the Marlins. Like, how can your pitching be so strong yet you can't hit anything worth a damn? A group with that good of a run differential shouldn't be drowning in the deep end. It's robbing them of what they could be. Ironically, which was what happened to them in 2017. What also isn't making sense to me is Kim Ang talking about how she didn't envision them as a high-scoring team? What? There's a huge difference between small ball and turning the pitching staff into a bunch of Jacob de Grams. And now it might be too late to do anything besides sell at the deadline again. Why do I want to punch a wall over this team right now? I hate this. Lowell Mets was the comfort food of the meme world. No matter what happened, I could count on this team to make me laugh and forget about life. Now I have to deal with the hollow shell of my existence. The New York Mets finally aren't run by a bunch of clowns. They don't suck. It feels so weird to say. Like I should go off chanting LOL METS and move on, but I can't anymore. I have to be creative in my writing now. I have to speak praise to the team thriving despite ungodly amounts of injuries. I have to acknowledge the impressive pitchers they have on display, both the proven and the revived. I have to build a shrine to Jacob deGrom so he can get some goddamn run support for once. All that's missing are the bats and this team has a legitimate shot to get to another World Series. Maybe Lindor's back can finally wake up since his defense is already there. Perhaps Alonzo and McNeil can as well. They just need a few and the memes will finally die. And I will cry like a little girl when it happens. I have no idea how I get this random hope that the Phillies won't be the most frustrating group this side of the Flyers. Whenever I look at this team on paper, they should be far more successful than they are, yet they keep shitting the damn bed! Do they need diapers? Maybe that'll stop the bullpen from prolapsing in crucial innings. Seriously, how the fuck is this bullpen still literal garbage? It's more likely for a group to accidentally be good instead of fall apart more often than the Middle East. You could have Ben Simmons take jump shots and he will somehow do better than this bullpen. Perhaps that area may be less volatile than the vastly inconsistent hitting core as well. It also doesn't help that many of them can't field worth a damn. For fuck's sake, Philly, you're better than this! Zach Wheeler isn't pitching like a Cy Young candidate, so you can trot out Hector fucking Neris as a closer for the fourth year in a row. Dombrowski, time to get that machete out. I think you need to chop off some heads. Good morning, agents. This is your objective, to take down Kyle Schwarber. He's currently wanted on several counts, and is considered to be an enemy of the state. His crimes include mass genocide against baseballs, voluntary ball slaughter, disregard for all life, and unwritten rules violations brought the Washington Nationals back to playoff contention. And that's what makes him dangerous. We'll show no mercy to you if you come in contact with him. Do not attempt to pitch to him, for it will mean your death. You can either be brought in dead or alive. Hopefully dead, as it will mean the Nationals miss the playoffs again. If you manage to catch Max Scherzer or Trey Turner in the process, it would also be appreciated. Good luck, and may God have mercy on you. Will you ever find your old form? It was looking close there for a hot minute. Once maligned bullpen rounding into one of the best units in the league. Craig Kimbrell rising from the ashes to dominate hitters again. Starting pitching being serviceable to give them a share of the NL Central. Then, like many teams in June, they slide down and fall apart. The Cubbies started the month a game and a half ahead in their division. They can now see it if they have binoculars. They had lost 11 in a row and 17 of 21. Lecture us about the tough opponents they faced during the stretch, but you have to beat the likes of the Dodgers and Brewers if you want to go anywhere in this league. Perhaps the hitting and starting pitching will show up again sometime? Maybe? Chicago does realize this is their last chance before the core is potentially dismantled, right? From how they're performing, it sure doesn't seem like it. The Reds are a very tough team to crack. On the surface, they should have the pieces to make a run at a division title. With the likes of Jesse Winker and Nick Castellanos hitting like they're McGuire and Canseco, it should result in good things. But that just hasn't happened. There isn't much besides them that are pulling their weight in the batter's box. Things have gotten better since May, yes, but Eugenio Suarez has been in a deep funk. Luis Castillo has been as well, but he's at least improved from his god-awful first two months of it. With the rest of their division conveniently collapsing besides one team, they're in second place, but here's the problem. What do they do? They'll need a miracle or two to reach the wildcard spots or division lead. They have skill, but is it anywhere near enough to get there? I feared that last year was their shot to do anything, and the top-heavy NL has me concerned for their future. Prove me wrong, Cincy. Milwaukee can only be so hot for so long. Where the fuck did this come from? Milwaukee? The team that looked uninspired as all hell headed into the year? 
They've become one of the most dominant teams in baseball? Look at that pitching! It might be the best rotation pound for pound in the bigs. Corbin Burns pitched like God himself in April. Brandon Woodruff has been quietly putting together a stretch of dominant starts. Freddie Peralta is performing like a top flight starter. Josh Hader is back to his cock swinging 2019 form. It just feels weird. Not because of the elite pitching, but because their bats are still pretty shit. The Brew Crew has one of the lowest team batting averages in baseball. And I get they were going more for defense in the offseason, but you have to hit better than around 220 to go anywhere. Willie Adamas has been very good as an acquisition, and Yelich is looking more like Yelich these days. But I'm wondering if this bubble pops. You can't just play Arizona, Colorado, Pittsburgh, and a struggling Cubs team every day. This next month is your proving ground. I'm just going to show this play in its entirety. This is the 2021 Pirates condensed into a bite-sized package. The ineptitude, the disorganization, the sheer hilarity and the humiliation are what this team is about now. They are the best comedy act in Pittsburgh, and it would be wise for them to continue to blow it up at the deadline. White Sox, please send them a nice package for Adam Frazier. It'll be their biggest win on the year. I had hopes for this team heading into the year, you know that? Getting a huge piece of Nolan Arenado for peanuts along with that rotation? Should have been a lot to compete for the NL Central. There's no dominant team here, yet they proceed to... Yeah, you get it now. They've fallen so hard that they had lost 18 of 24. The hitting has evaporated from nearly every position, but that doesn't tell enough of this landslide to irrelevance. What's truly killing this team are injuries to the rotation. Jack Flaherty and Miles Michaelis are out long term. A few other pitchers are fighting them as well. And it's exposed a cold fact about this roster. It's very weirdly built. It's like the Cardinals have gotten too comfortable with trying to patch up holes from within and don't have the proper materials to do so anymore. And oh boy, here begin those ugly rumors about Arenado potentially opting out of his contract. It's still a great trade for St. Louis, but Jesus, this was supposed to be the year you truly emerged! Not for where the wizard was revealed to be some short man pulling strings behind a curtain! But at least you still have that Molina and Wainwright battery, right? You see, that's the kind of shit that's leading you down this hole. It's no surprise that this organization is forfeit. They threw up the white flag in the offseason when they traded Arenado. Why should I react that passionately about how bad they are? It's odd because they're really good at home, but absolutely shit on the road. For Colorado's sake, it hopefully won't depress Trevor Story's value to where they'll get fewer pennies than they did for Arenado. Yet, for how poorly this team is run, they not only allow Jeff Breidich to sneak out the back door to avoid the guillotine, but were rewarded with a fucking all-star game by the league. The only thing that'd be more embarrassing would be trying to cheat and failing miserably at even that. Don't be shocked when I say they were alleged of doing that shit in 2018. The year they got swept by Milwaukee. And fuck this team. Things are going alright in their bubble title defense, for the most part. But even then, there are a few cracks that are starting to show in their shiny exterior. They've been very hot and cold throughout the year. The Dodgers will be dominant one moment, then skid down the hill the next. Max Muncy will become the on-base king of baseball, yet some other hitters will fail to launch. Injuries will hurt this team so hard that it not only costs them a great player in Dustin May, but they'll single-handedly rejuvenate Albert Pujols' Twilight. They're a team that always finds a way to replace damaged parts from within or by trade, so I'm not worried on that front. But there is a new concern for them heading into the postseason push. It involves Trevor Bauer. He didn't just stick his hands in spider tack, he stuck his dick in a spider web of sexual assault allegations. The investigation has forced them to be shelved until it's complete. And who the hell knows what the findings will be. It's just another wrench thrown in their path, but they've found ways to overcome them before. In spite of Dave Roberts, of course. Your time is now. Any other statement will either be falsified or exaggerated. The Padres have been preparing for this moment for a few years now. And now the harvest is being reaped. Fernando Tatis Jr. has become a bona fide star of the game and the chorus around him is worthy of competition for a World Series title. The pitching is now elite. Their starting rotation boasts an arsenal of weapons rivaled by very few in the league. The only things that will be standing in their way are obvious. The top of their division is cutthroat. LA will be forever hated in their interference of San Diego might. And now they have a new challenger in the Giants who they hope will collapse. To make sure they're safe, they're going to want to secure the division, but it's tougher than not. 
Once again, not due to their weaknesses, but their competition. It's as brutal as the NL Central was in 2015. The tiebreaker will probably be how each team does against Arizona and Colorado. I don't need to say anything else. I'd just be repeating myself otherwise. Remember when I was wondering about the Giants' course of action because I had them pegged for mediocrity? About that. They must have taken that skepticism personally. There are several questions I must ask about San Francisco that haven't been. Like, how the fuck is this happening? What kind of alternate universe am I in? And how have they been holding serve with some of the league's elite in LA and San Diego? Vasco da Gama had it wrong. The Fountain of Youth is in fucking San Fran. The likes of Buster Posey and Brandon Crawford are banging out hits like their dynasty days. Kevin Gossman has become one of the best pitchers in baseball. It's both hard to believe and awe-inspiring to witness. And the thing is, they haven't tapered off yet. I hope for their sake they don't. Especially in an infamous odd year. The amount of chaos this team can bring to the National League if they keep this shit up is insane. Things are getting a bit zany in the baseball world. The league may be unable to get out of its own damn way, but we should be winding up with an intriguing homestretch. For the American League, there's a bit of switching. Boston is now winning the AL East, but the White Sox and Astros stay put winning their respective divisions. Wildcards are Tampa Bay and Oakland, a rematch of the 2019 wildcard game. In the National League, the Mets stay put winning the NL East. Odd, I know. The NL Central is now Milwaukee's to lose. And the Dodgers are still my favorite to win the NL West. The NL wildcards are San Diego, and I hope to God the Giants hang on to allow the world to continue to shit their pants. There's not much else to say here. Let's play some ball. And MLB, please don't get in the way of it. Well, Brett Phillips continues to uh, get loose down there in the bullpen, and uh, he does so in uh, original style. And 49 lifted into left center field. Right there's Kiermaier to make the catch.